Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this very colorful letterhead in Word. So I've opened up my default document and my A4 page. So the first thing we need to do is decide on our colors. Now this can be a bit of a challenge, so I find the easiest way is just to hop onto the internet, then just pop into Google color swatches, and then you're presented with lots of different options. And of course, across the top here, you've also got a lot more options. So I've chosen this color swatch here. And all I'm going to do is just take a quick screenshot. Once you've taken your screenshot, go back to Word, go up to Insert, along to Picture, click on the drop down and select Picture from File. Then go to the file where you've saved your screenshot and then just click insert. Now when your picture appears often you can't move it around so you need to ensure you're on the picture format tab. If it's not there it's because you haven't selected your picture. Click on it, go along to wrap text, click on the drop down and select in front of text. Alternatively, you can just right click on your picture, go down to wrap text and do exactly the same in front of text. Once you've done that, you can move this anywhere in your document. So I'm just going to put it in the middle here for now. The next thing we're going to do is to insert the graphics. Now we're going to go up to insert, shapes, click on the drop down. And of course, you can fully customize this, pick any shape you want, it's completely up to you. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use this shape here. So just click on it and your cursor has now formed a cross. Just click and drag. And then your shape will appear in whatever default colors uh, you have your software set to. Now currently it's very thin, but there is an outline around this shape. And there's also the blue shape fill. Now again, if you're on the shape format tab, go along to these two icons here. This one is the outline, click on it. Now you can have an outline if you want to, but I don't want to, so I'm going to click no outline. And the shape fill here, click on the drop down and go to more fill colors. This dialog box will appear and again, we'll have all the different colors from your color wheel and other color options across the top. But I like to use this eyedropper tool because this allows me to match colors I found on the internet. So just click on the eyedropper tool and then we're just going to click on our first color. And you can see that color appears in this box here. Once you're happy, just click OK. And then your shape will change into that color. Now I'm just going to turn this shape round using this little circular icon here to fit the corner. Now at this stage, I'm not going to worry too much about it fitting because we're going to sort all that out at the end. All I'm going to do now is copy and paste this. Command or Control C, click off, Command or Control V. And then all I'm going to do is just change the color of this shape as well. So go back up to Shape Format, along to Shape Fill, click on the drop down, more fill colors, eyedropper tool, click on the color of choice and click OK. Now at the moment, this shape is on top of the shape below, but I want this shape to go below that shape. So again, ensure that the shape is highlighted, go to shape format, go along to this section here. And in this particular case, I want to send it backwards. So I can either send backwards, which will send it one shape backwards, or I can just at this stage, send to back. Once I've sent to back, then I can just move that across. Again, I'm not being too fussy about where it's going at the moment. We can come back and sort that out later. Again, copy and paste. Go up to shape format again, shape fill, click on the drop down, more fill colors, eyedropper tool, and then click on the color of your choice and click OK. Go back up to center backwards, center back. Copy and paste one more time. Shape fill, more fill colors, eyedropper tool, 
colour of our choice and then send to back. Perfect. Now once we're happy with the colours then we need to just fit this shape into the corner. What we'll do first is just align all the shapes. Okay, once you're happy, we're now going to group these. So click on this shape here. Hold your command or control key down and click on each of the other shapes to highlight them all. Go up to the icon group, click on the drop down and select group. Now you've done that, all the shapes will move around as one shape. Now to increase or decrease the size of this, if you want to keep the ratios, click on the corner and hit the shift key. That will keep the ratios of that shape the same. But if you just want to play around with it, squash it, squeeze it and change the curves on it, you can also do that as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and rotate this and pop it into this corner here. like so and we can get rid of the colour swatch now click on it and press delete so once we've got this shape now because we're going to replicate this and put it in this corner here we need to make all the adjustments first and then copy and paste it so I'm just going to ungroup it now go up to shape format click group and click ungroup but whilst it's all highlighted don't click off it you need to go over to this panel here now this panel will appear if you either double click on your shape or you go across to this format pane icon and click on that. Once you do that, go to this effects icon here and go down to shadow. Just click on that drop down and go along to these presets and just click on the drop down. Apologies, you can't see them all, but I'm actually only using this one here. Let's click on that one. And then you can use all these different sliders to adjust the shadow of that graphic. Now I'm happy with this so far but I'm just going to increase the blur. So I'm just going to take that up to 12. Perfect. Then you can go back up to group, click on the drop down and select group. And again that graphic is one complete shape. Now I'm just going to copy and paste it. Then I'm going to turn it round so the rectangle is perfectly upside down. Then I'm just going to move it down to this corner here. Now, unfortunately, you can see the shadows haven't come out on here. So what I'm going to do is exactly the same. Just go up to shape, format, group, ungroup. Go back over to the shadows, click on the drop down. And now you can't unfortunately see the shadow I'm going to select. It's the reverse of this one. So it's the bottom right hand corner where the shadow is actually pointing up to the left. Again, I'm going to go and blur my shadow to 12 points. Click enter, and then go back up and group those shapes. Once you're happy with that, we'll go ahead and put in the text. So in my letters, generally, I will use text boxes because it's far easier to move everything around, line everything up, make everything bigger or smaller, and it's just really, really flexible. So I'm going to go up and insert text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box. So I'm just going to click anywhere and draw. Don't worry too much about where it is at the moment. And although you can't see it at the moment, all text boxes come with a white background and a black border. We're going to get rid of both of those because it means if you're printing onto different colored paper, you won't get a white box. So we're going to insert some text first and then we're going to get rid of that white background and border. So I'm just going to go and grab some text. Okay, once you've got your text, go up to shape format, go to shape fillings, click no fill, up to the outline tool and no outline. And now I'm just going to reduce the size of that text box. If you want to increase or decrease the size of the text or adjust it or adjust the font, just double click, command or control A, Go up to the Home tab and click on the font of your choice. Let's just go to Arial for now. And just make sure you've got all the text as you want it because all we're going to do now is copy and paste this text box. 
right this text box won't move again and it's all to do with the wrapping so again select the box up to shape format wrap text in front of text and now we can move that text box around again we can change the alignment of this text box as well but we're just going to copy and paste it first so command and control c command and control v just move that one down go back up to this one double click inside command and control a to select it all go to the home tab then go along to right alignment and then you can just right align that address so we're going to copy and paste this one this is going to become the initial dear mr jones and the title copy and paste again for the main body of the text copy and paste again for the signature block and copy and paste one more time for the date so double click inside command or control a just pop the date in then all we can do is right align this text so make sure you're on the home tab go to right alignment and then you can hold the command key down click on the box above go to shape format and go along to the alignment tool click on the drop down and align to right and that will mean that these two text boxes are perfectly aligned in this text box double click again command or control a I'm going to highlight that go to the home tab I'm going to put this in bold underline it I'm going to go up to the increase font size tool and just click on it a number of times until I'm happy and I'm just going to stretch out that text box the next text box will be the body of your text so double click again command or control A I'm just going to delete that stretch out this text box let's just move that one down double click inside I'm just going to put some random text let's get rid of some of it because it's too much for this particular page And again, this is the beauty about text boxes. You can move them anywhere you like. I'll line it all up in a minute. So I'm just going to finish the signature block here. Double click, Command or Control A. Great, now all we need to do is line up these here. So just make sure they're at the distance apart that you want them. Because all we're going to do is align to the left. I'm just going to move those down so you can just see if the spacing between these text boxes is okay and then once you're happy hit the command or control key and select all three boxes go up to shape format along to align and align to left okay if you're happy with the way that this letter's laid out and you want a second page the most important thing to do is, is to make everything a group so click on the graphics all the text boxes including the date go up to shape format along to group and then just click group now the whole lot now will move around together and all you need to do is then just to click you can just see your main cursor coming up here just go up to insert and down to break and there you'll see that your document has been given a second page let me just zoom out I'm just going to go to view and multiple pages so all I'm going to do now is go back to my original group copy it command or control C move across to the second page command or control V and all you need to do is just to move this up to where you want it. You can use your arrow keys for this. And then once you've done that and you're happy with where everything is, you can then just simply go up to shape format, group and ungroup. And then all you need to do is just go and delete these for your second page. Or you need to keep the signature block whatever you need to do and then you can just continue writing and of course you can stretch up these boxes if you want the text to start a little higher up the page and just move these down to where it suits you or of course you can move it up don't forget to align everything again so hold your command and control key down shape format align 
align to left. If you want to group that together and move it around, again, go ahead and group it. And then you can just move this to where you want it. Okay, and the last thing, I'm just going to move this box over here. So I'm just going to ungroup everything. I'm just going to click on these two boxes. I'm just going to group those because I want to move them. I'm just going to use my arrow key because I just want them to come in a little bit. It's a bit close to that margin. As you can see, this margin here is quite wide. Maybe to there. Perfect. And as you can see there, it was really flexible, really easy to do. You don't have to nudge all the text. It doesn't go on to the next line. It doesn't nudge everything down. It's a real pain. So I find this is the easiest way and the most flexible way to construct a letter in Word. I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.